What's up y'all? As always, I apologize in advance if you see a wayward cat walking around. She just likes to be included. It's time for another tips and techniques vid and in this one I'm going to be talking about one of the most important parts of the fursuit head and that is the mouth. Eee. Now the mouth is like I just said one of the most integral parts of the fursuit head because it is one of two, the other being the eyes, of the best ways to express yourself, you know, through the fursuit head expression. So it's very important that you get it right because a mouth that is created a certain way can make a very different emotion if done only slightly differently. For instance, if you want an angry emotion on your fursuit head and you have angry eyes, but you have the mouth being a smile, that's going to be more of an evil grin versus what a frown would be, which would be an angry, you know, sorrow. An evil grin and angry sorrow are very different when it comes to being angry. So it's very important to make sure to get your fursuit mouth the exact right way to portray the emotion that you really want to get across. So for this vid, I'm going to be going over three different types of mouths that you see on fursuits, generally three different types. And then I'm gonna go over a couple, you know, random tips at the end on how you can go about creating your mouth. Also, I'm just gonna say that while there are tons of different animals and tons of different mouth styles, I'm mainly gonna be talking about, you know, mammal mouths for this, that being like canine and feline, beaks and horse mouths and reptile mouths. You can still apply these techniques to them, but they are a little different. So just keep in mind that when I'm talking about all this stuff, I'm generally talking about canine just for, you know, the generalization of this video. So with that, let's begin. So the first mouth that you're gonna see is what I call the standard smile or the standard mouth. It looks like this. This is the kind of smile kind of mouth that you're gonna see generally on most fursuits. That's why I call it the standard. It's probably the one you'll see most commonly across the board. And this smile can be defined as an open mouth, you know, open fursuit mouth, and the edges of the mouth go right up to about where the cheek is. They kind of stop right where the cheek begins and they just create, you know, the illusion of just like an open mouth and a small smile. So just remember that when you're seeing this, it's always defined by just going right up to the cheek and it's probably the most easiest kind of smile to do. It's generally what people do when they are just, you know, started making fursuits or so something of that like. And I would say, like I just said, it's probably the easiest one to do, which is why you see it so commonly. Some notable fursuit makers that use this style for most of their fursuits are Don't Hug Cacti, Made For You, Mix Candy. They're all fursuit makers who you see the smile on the most. And that just goes to show that makers of all levels can do the smile. So it's not just like, you know, limited to people who are just creating their first fursuit. You can do this all the way down the line if you're still creating fursuits in years to come. It's also like the base standard of fursuit smiles, so it's kind of like you have to learn how to do this before you can do any of the other techniques. So it's always good to start out with this smile, and if it's your thing, keep going. If it's not, you can expand into other things. But other than that, yeah, that is the standard smile, and it is always cute. Okay, mouth slash smile <laughs> number two, and that is what I call the exaggerated smile. It looks like this. The exaggerated smile is kind of exactly what it sounds like. It is when the mouth or the smile is exaggerated to be really kind of big. And it also doesn't have to just be a smile. You could also do, you know, like frowns or whatever you want. It's not, you know, regulated to just smile. It's just that, you know, the smile is what you see the most often. But this type of mouth can be defined as it is similar to the standard in which, you know, it's an open mouth and the smile goes like out. But the difference between this and the standard is this is when the creases of the mouth go far into the cheek almost, especially when it's a smile hitting the eyes. Think of like big car, this is like the big cartoony one. This is the big exaggerated one. This is the one that you're gonna see in all those, you know, 90s cartoons where they have like the really huge smiles and the big chubby cheeks. That is why it's called exaggerated because it is very cartoony. So always look for when the mouth goes into the cheeks, pretty far into the cheeks. If it's gonna be a frown, it might go down pretty hard or, you know, like have the edges of the mouth be a little more exaggerated, but if it's a smile, it's gonna go all the way almost touching the eye. This is what I would say is probably a more advanced technique. 
it's not that you can't do it if you're a beginner, but I would highly encourage you to master, you know, the standard smile before going into this one, because it's almost kind of like you need to know the rules before you break them. This is a technique that comes after you already know how to make a fursuit mouth or make a fursuit smile. So I wouldn't jump straight into this. I would, you know, learn how to do something standard for now. And then once you feel comfortable in that, you can do the uh, exaggerated smile because I find that this technique has a lot of personal touch for it. So yes, you can look up you know, tutorials on how to do it, but a lot of the this expression has a suit maker's very specific touch to it. It took them, you know, weeks, months, whatever of experimenting to get it exactly how they want it to look. So I would say, yeah, that this, this is a more advanced technique. If you're feeling up to it, go for it. If you're still a little nervous, then I would put it aside until you feel more confident with what you're doing. Makers that you see doing this type of mouth can be probably the most popular one out there is More For Less. Then you have people like Artcore Costumes and I would like to think that I do it too. At least that's what I tell myself. I try and do more exaggerated expressions with mine. So again, this is a really fun expression and type of mouth style to do, but I wouldn't attempt it until you're feeling more comfortable. But other than that, it's always like probably one of the cutest ones you can see out there because it offers you the most expression. Okay, last type of, you know, commonly seen fursuit mouth, and that is the kimono mouth. It looks like this. The kimono mouth is almost wholly based in, you know, Asian style fursuits, the anime kind of style fursuits. And it can be defined as a mouth that is very, very small. It is when the mouth is super tiny and it almost sometimes looks like, you know, the kitty three mouth. And the reason it's so small is because it's meant to accentuate the huge eyes of kimono suits to create that ultra cute look because Big eyes, tiny mouth equals super cute. So this is when the mouth is going to be very small and more often than not, this mouth cannot move in any way. With the other two techniques, sometimes if you do them right, the jaw will like jiggle or whatever, but this is a mouth that is almost completely static and that's because it is generally made off of resin bases. It can be made out of foam, it can, but resin base will give you the best look for this one because the key to this mouth is all about the shaping. If you don't shape it right, it can look kind of off, but if you shape it just perfectly, you get that super cute mouth. And the easiest shaping obviously is with clay and resin to get that most precise shape. So this is a mouth that's almost always going to be built on like some kind of base and so it doesn't offer any movement. More often than not, this mouth only really serves as to breathe out of, not really create like, you know, expressions with your chin or whatever. But yeah, that is the kimono mouth. You can most commonly see it in suit makers like K-Line and other makers of that type of fursuit. I don't have a ton that come to mind, so unfortunately I can't give more examples. But this is also a mouth style that I've never really seen on toonie suits and I really don't think you should put them on toonie suits just because cartoony fursuits I would argue have more of a western influence where kimono have more of an eastern influence and they kind of can look maybe a little weird if you mash them together not saying it's not possible do what you want but again this is the very tiny kimono mouth that always looks super adorable on those Japanese and anime inspired fursuits. All right, so those are the three main types of fursuit mouths you'll see kind of across the board. Like I said before, there are so many other ways. These aren't the, you know, the only ones, but they are the main ones. So I, I would argue that if you look at, you know, your common fursuit, you can probably pick out one of these three styles as their mouth type, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't experiment, you know, with your own suit, you know, invent something new, be the Steve Jobs of fursuit mouths. But moving on, I am now going to go over three-ish, maybe, assorted tips on how to go about creating your fursuit mouth or fursuit expression. All right, tip number one. This one should be fairly obvious, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Carve out your fursuit mouth. If you've seen any of my past videos, you've probably heard this story before, so I'll keep it short. But for those who haven't, basically, when I was still a baby fursuit maker, 
I didn't think about carving my fursuit mouth out. I don't know why, I just didn't. And what happened was, because I had a very, very slim, you know, air passage to breathe out of, I had a panic attack in the middle of the fursuit photo at Anthrocon, and I almost passed out because I couldn't breathe. So, yeah, not great. So always make sure to carve out your fursuit mouth. Generally, when you're doing it with foam, all you gotta do is just hollow it out. It's gonna be a big chunk of foam generally, so just take your knife or your X-Acto or whatever and just hollow it out. Just make sure that it has like a curve to it so you can breathe out of it. And always make sure that, you know, the bottom jaw is far away enough from the top jaw that it creates a hole for you to, you know, have air coming in through. Now, if you're somebody who's like, well, I don't want to hollow it out because I don't want a big hole because if I look up into my fursuit, I can see my face or whatever. You don't have to make a huge hole to breathe out of. Some people don't need that. For my personal fursuits, I always make really big holes because as I told you before, I had a bad past incident with not having enough air. So I always make sure that the fursuits I create for myself and others have very open airways. But I also own fursuits that have very small airways. That's just how that maker made them. And I can breathe out of them. It's not great, but I can do it. So if you're somebody who is concerned about, you know, people seeing it up into your fursuit or whatever, you can make the airway smaller if you know you can handle that. Just know your own limits. I mean, everyone's different. So if you know that you don't have a problem with a you know, smaller breathing space, then do it, it's up to you. But just make sure you do it. Just don't leave something that's gonna block your airway and then suddenly you're gonna need to, you know, breathe and you can't because that is no fun for anyone. Okay, tip number two, and this is gonna be one I'm sure a few people are not gonna wanna hear. And that is, I really encourage you to stay away from moving jaws with foam heads. Now before I can hear anyone being angry, let me just say that moving jaws with foam fursuit heads and fursuit mouths is possible. You can do it. What I mean by this tip is not that it's impossible or whatever, it's the fact that the foam moving jaw is never going to move as well as you want it to. I have experimented it, it, with it in the past. I have seen other people experiment with it. And I'm just going to say it. Moving jaws do not work well unless they have some kind of hardware in there to make them open and close very well. And most of the time, you can't really achieve that with, you know, foam and elastic because I see that to be like, you know, the predominant technique for doing moving jaws with foam heads. I would really say that you're only going to get that look with a resin base that is, you know, articulated to move open like that. And there is a difference between moving and articulation because yes, if you do do a moving jaw with a foam base, it'll move when you talk, but if you wanted to articulate when you talk. You're going to need some kind of extra materials in there to make it open and close exactly with your mouth. My best advice is try and stay away from them if you're doing a foam base. If you really want it, try and go for the resin base. And if you're thinking, but I want a toonie head and I can't do that with a resin base. You can absolutely make fursuit toonie heads on resin bases. It is entirely possible. I've seen maker both novice and professional alike do it. All you have to do is carve out the eyes a little more. You don't have to put realistic glass eyes or anything. Just make toonie eyes, pad it up with foam in a specific way, and suddenly you have a toonie head that has a articulated mouth and it was built off a of base. It's 100% possible. So don't write off resin bases because they're realistic because really you can do anything with them. So I would highly encourage you if a moving jaw is important to you to look into getting something with articulation in it versus just trying to put elastic in and just try and like, you know, wiggle your jaw around it. It will work in the sense that your jaw will move, but it won't work in the sense that it will move very well. Okay, last tip. This is not gonna be so much a tip more, it's gonna kinda be like me telling you how to do something. I've definitely gone over this in past videos, but I felt like I probably might not have been super detailed in those past vids. So I'm gonna try and go a little more in depth here, and that is I'm gonna try and show you how to get 
the basic smile shape in fursuits because I know that can be really hard depending on how you're carving your head. So I'm gonna give you a very basic way of doing it. Generally how I see it done and I'm gonna sprinkle a little of my own technique in there. So take of it what you will. This is also have visuals, so definitely watch the video if you want to see how this is done. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to shape the top muzzle. You're going to make it go kind of curvy, kind of up, because, you know, we're going to do a smile here. Once you have the top muzzle carved, you're going to carve the bottom muzzle. And it's going to generally curve a little bit up, just like the top muzzle. It's going to match. So once you have those together, and, you know, they're in place, you're going to take a third piece of foam and it can come in a variety of shapes, but for this, I'm going to say make it kind of like an oval. You are going to overlay it onto the crease where the top muzzle and the bottom muzzle kind of combined. And you're going to carve it down a little bit. So where it connects to the bottom muzzle is going to be kind of, you know, flowing into each other. It's gonna be smaller. It's gonna kind of like mesh seamlessly but where it kind of touches the top muzzle, it's going to be a little bit bulkier. And voila, you kind of have the essential recipe for a fursuit smile. Now, this is not the end-all be-all way to do smiles. This is just one of the ways and the general basic way that I think you should start with to get the bearings of it. A lot of fursuit smiles and fursuit mouths are a result of the maker's countless hours of experimentation to get it to look exactly how they want. So while I just gave you the basic tools, I highly, highly encourage you to mess more with it and get it to look exactly how you want. I'm gonna tell you right now that there is even another technique to doing this, more visuals. You can just take that bottom and top muzzle and you can create this shape and it is going to be kind of similar to the other one, but it's a little more you know, entrenched in the bottom jaw, and that can also help create the smile. And another thing, you can make the muzzle, the top muzzle, go a little bit farther into the mouth and put that shape farther back to create even a longer smile. See, there's just, there's so many ways to do it. I'm trying to give general knowledge because I wanna give you, you know, a jumping off point, but I really can't tell you, you know, the definitive way to make our fursuit smile. Like I said earlier, fursuit makers spend, you know, countless hours and weeks and months, whatever, experimenting with how to make the smile exactly how they want. So I really encourage you to do so too, because that is what in the end, even if you know all the tools, that is what is going to give you the look of the smile, the look of the expression that you truly want. All right, everyone, that is the end of this video. I hope you learned something or I hope you didn't and you're laughing at me as always. But anyways, thank you for watching. My next video is probably going to go back to my, you know, starting your own fursuit business video series. And, you know, after that, I'll just keep going. Also, one final note that I am going to be at Anthro Northwest this weekend. Yay, it'll be my first time at the con. I'm going to be wearing Spectre here, so if you see him, definitely come up and say hi. I love meeting you guys at cons and you telling me about how you made your fursuits. It's just, it's so awesome to hear and I love seeing pictures too. If you made your first fursuit, definitely show it to me. I love seeing that stuff. So yeah, come say hi, come give this big sparkle dog a hug. I'm really excited to go to this con for the first time and I hope to see you all there. So until next time. Bye-bye.